warmed up. Arturo, you're, what do you think of the New York State Athletic Commission's decision to make the undercard fighters weigh in day of the fight? Well, if, uh, if everybody's happy about it, it's all right. With me, it was fine. They did the right job the first time when I fought the last, on February, and this time they did a great job again, and I think it, everything is great. Why do you think they did it? Well, they, they figured you know, I was a little bit too heavy, but you know, it doesn't really matter because everybody had the same opportunity to weigh in the morning before the fight. You had a little trouble making weight today. What have you done to put on the pounds since and rehydrate, and what do you weigh now? Well, I'm not sure, but uh, the only thing I know, I feel good, and I'm ready to fight tonight. So you've rehydrated, no problem. You don't feel it jeopardized your, your strength or compromised you at all? Not at all. The wind this morning was fine. They can, do, they can do that all the time. It's fine with me. You know, you're on the rebound. You're trying to get back and win a title. And you're fighting a guy. This is the third opponent they've thrown at you in eight days, a guy that it looks like a colossal mismatch, perhaps, based on, on the fact that you smashed Joey Gamash into retirement in two rounds three months ago. Are you a little uneasy to, to say that, you know, this could get really ugly out there? Are you... Uh, not at all. No, I think that uh, you can never soon to submit your opponent. And uh, tonight, uh, we're going to see what's going to happen tonight. And you had a final word for us? And I want to congratulate my sister, Pina. She got married today. I couldn't make it. I'm sorry from all of us. Congratulations. Okay, Arturo Gatti, I'll tell you, it's hot enough in here. I think I've, went, I've gone down a couple of weight divisions, JB. <laughs> All right, Nick, and maybe I should as well. All right, so again, Vladimir Klitschko, awfully impressive in his victory over David Bostas, an awfully strong man indeed. Still to come later this evening around 11.30 p.m., it'll be the main event, heavyweight championship bout between Lennox Lewis taking on the young gun, Michael Grant. Grant at 6'7", 250. How relaxed is he before this big event? I would say he's pretty relaxed, sleeping. Normally, he is singing gospel songs, Christian songs, but he is resting comfortably right now. Still to come on this evening's undercard, it'll be a featherweight championship bout between the champions. Paul Engel taking on Junior Jones from New York City. And of course, up next, it'll be Arturo Gatti taking on Eric Jakubowski. Now, as you heard Nick Charles interviewing Arturo Gatti, there is an awful lot of controversy surrounding Arturo Gatti. And as you heard in that interview, surrounding the weight gain in his last fight against Joey Gamash back on in February, Arturo Gatti gained an awful lot of weight, and as a result, there is a pending multi-million dollar lawsuit by the Gamash camp against the New York State Athletic Commission for what they feel was a poorly executed weigh-in. Let's take you back to last February. The official weigh-in the day before, Gatti weighed in at 141 pounds. That was objected to by the Gamash camp, but there was no re-weighing. Now, HBO, as has been its practice the last several years conducted an unofficial weigh-in on the night of the fight and Gaddy weighed 160 pounds 19 pounds heavier now what was to have been a competitive bout with Gamash turned out to be anything but as you see Gamash picking himself up off the canvas and in the second round was dropped again pummeled by Gaddy required hospitalization and subsequently retired from boxing now again Gaining weight, nothing new for Arturo Gatti. As you take a look at his five most recent fights, you see the weight gains, most notably in that second to last fight against Reyes Munoz, a 21 pound weight gain. Nothing illegal about it. And earlier today, the New York State Athletic Commission said all non heavyweights on the undercard tonight had to have a day of the fight weigh in. Gatti weighed 149 and a half this morning, was given 15 minutes to lose that half pound, came back, got in the buff and on the scale and made the 149 limit. Now you heard him tell Nick Charles he feels strong. What that strenuous effort to lose that weight, what kind of effect will it have on him? We'll find out, that remains to be answered. But joining me now to talk a little bit about this, uh, Kevin Kelly, and we'll get to you in one second, but quickly we understand that Nick Charles has an additional report. Let's turn back in to Nick Charles. Nick? Well, J.B., on the left of me, you see the scale that we brought in, hoping some of the fighters would get on it who are fighting on the undercard. Junior Jones, in fact, who's fighting for the IBF Featherweight Championship at 125 pounds, did get on and checked in at 131. His opponent, though, Paul Engel, declined because he told us he was discouraged by the New York State Athletic Commission from weighing in night of the fight, as we've been doing here at HBO and TVKO for many years, and also by his promoter. So that's 
the situation here. We have the scale out here. Arturo Gatti, Gatti as, you, as you heard, declined to step on the scale tonight. He's obviously heavier than he was this morning. But once again, Engel did not want to go on. Junior Jones did. So some of the fighters are stepping on, having no problem with it. It appears that the New York State Athletic Commission uh, is, though. That's the, that's the latest from here. Downstairs, let's go back up to you, J.B. All right, Nick, thank you very much. Now let's bring in Kevin Kelly, as we mentioned, former featherweight champ. Kevin, you know what the controversy is surrounding Arturo Gatti. Your thoughts about weighing in the day before versus the day of? Well, weighing in the day before fight was invented by the doctors who felt that weigh-ins were essential 24 hours for the body to properly hydrate, properly get toned, to get some nutrition into it. Because it's kind of unfair to a fighter to weigh in the morning of the fight. A lot of times what happens is a lot of fighters, this has been the case of Trinidad blowing up 20 pounds, Shane Mosley. I know for myself, I train with these guys. It, it, it ain't something, they're singling out Gotti. I feel it's very unfair to single out Gotti. Look at James Sony, 18 pounds before the Roy Jones fight. So if you look at a lot of incidences before this incident, you'll see a lot of fighters. It ain't just a problem with Gotti, the problem in boxing. But how do you fix the problem? As long as a fighter makes the weight designed by the contract, I don't believe there's a problem with the next day him weighing up to 40, 50 pounds over. Now, you mentioned James Tony. In the case of Tony versus Roy Jones, that extra weight apparently hurt James Tony. He was awfully lethargic, very slow in his bout against Jones. Yet for Gaddy, it helped him. So how do you bridge the gap there? Well, how you bridge the gap is that you sometimes they weigh a fighter in with the gloves on, with the shoes on. I've been weighed in before like that. I believe that if you got a naked weight to start, you get a naked weight to finish. A lot of times they weigh the guy in, they look at that guy, he's heavy. He's a big bone guy. A lot of guys, are, there's metabolism, it's their body. Some guys get, gain 10, some guys gain 18, some guys even gain 22 pounds before a fight. In the history of boxing, I think it's very safe for a fighter to hydrate his body properly. It was proven by the doctors. This is not something that we made up or any commission made up. The doctors made it and designed it for fighters. Okay, you mentioned 24 hours now. Certainly, it remains to be seen what kind of effect it's going to have on Arturo Gatti this evening. He told our Nick Charles, as you heard a few moments ago, that he is fine. He doesn't expect there to be any problem at all. If, in fact, he's being singled out, will he have an issue to go back at the New York State Athletic Commission with that? I believe it's a problem with the manager of Joey Camacho, who is giving a problem to the commission. I believe if the outrun was different, the outcome was different, Camacho would have won the fight, there wouldn't have been no lawsuit. There would have been anything. <laughs> I think it's a matter of how Gotti finished Joey Camacho. I mean, you have to, if you have to criticize something, they're going to criticize the weight. Okay, so I believe that we're being petty here because if Kamach was 18 pounds heavier, I believe that the manager would have no problem. You are as smooth up here on the announce booth as you are in the ring, Kevin. I just try to be. Thank you very much. All right, well, we've been talking an awful lot about the weight issue as it relates to Arturo Gatti. We're going to find out whether or not it will have an effect on him. That match is coming up, Arturo Gatti and Eric Jakubowski. Let's take you back downstairs to Jim Lampley. Thank you, JB. What a tumultuous career Arturo Gatti is having in 1998. He lost three consecutive fights, all of them rousing battles against Angel Manfredi and twice against Ivan Robinson. Then, justifiably, he took several months off to rejuvenate his body. Came back August 14, 1999 against a vastly underqualified opponent named Reyes Munoz, who had been out of the ring for more than a year prior to entering against Gatti. And it was a disaster. First round knockout, and Reyes Munoz was taken to a hospital near the gambling facility in Foxwoods, Connecticut, for observation. Came back in February, six months later. You know what happened against Gamache, you've already seen it. And just like Reyes Munoz before him, Joey Gamache was taken from being knocked out by Gatti to a hospital for observation. In those two fights, Gatti landed 74 punches, and his opponents landed only 16. They were brutal mismatches, and Arturo Gatti is still being matched that way. The man who took this fight on less than one week's notice, Eric Jakubowski, has been out of the ring. Going on throughout the history of prize fighting, we just don't see these kinds of fights that often between headline fighters and and tomato cans as they are called in boxing uh this is the last of such 
fights that are supposed to help restore Gaddy after those three hard-fought fights, killer fights, really, in 98. He's going to fight now at welterweight. He himself admits that if they had day of weigh-ins, he would have had a fight at higher weights from the start of his career, where he should have been. And they're pointing toward a possible match with Oscar De La Hoya if De La Hoya can beat Shane Mosley in June. There were other opponents who were listed for the fight before Jakubowski. They were regarded as less qualified once put under the microscope. There's conflicting information about Jakubowski's record. In front of me, I have a piece of paper that says he's 20 and 6. You saw the information there, which had been given to us at HBO, 19 and 4. That listing said 14 KOs. I have written information that says he has only four KOs. One of his fights was against his brother, and this is highly questionable stuff. Now, here comes Arturo Gatti, looking, as Larry Merchant said, for one more easy victory to set himself up for a possible date with Oscar De La Hoya in the fall. In my judgment, the flap over his weight, while unfair to him, as having a beneficial result because New York and New Jersey are doing day of weigh-ins in the mornings from now on. Well, and, and typical of Arturo's whole career, people are talking about Arturo Thunder Gatti. He's not the headliner on this card, but he's gotten as much ink as anybody, just as during his three consecutive losses on HBO, he didn't lose an ounce of his fan popularity. 31 wins, four losses, including those three in a row in 1998, 26 KOs, only three rounds fought since 1998, and we don't expect him to have to work too long tonight. Now we're in the middle of the here at Madison Square Garden from Panix USA Main Event, and your King of Beers Budweiser, we go to the welterweight division. This bout scheduled for 10 rounds. The judges assigned at ringside, scoring on a 10-point must system, will be George Colon, Ron McNair, and Fred Ucci. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Wayne Kelly. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trimmed with red and blue, and weighing in at 145 pounds. He comes to us from Whiting, Indiana, with a record of 20 victories, four KOs to his credit, with only six losses. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Eric Chekobowski. his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue, and weighing in at 149 pounds. From Jersey City, New Jersey, his professional record, an outstanding 31 victories, 26 by KO, with four losses. Ladies and gentlemen, the former junior lightweight champion of the world, Arturo Thunder Gotti. center of the ring. Chief seconds only. Chief seconds only. Center of the ring. Our gentleman with boxing on the new rules of New York State Athletic Commission. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands. Come out boxing at the bell. Good luck. All right, Arturo Gatti uh, looking to uh, make a short appearance here tonight against a pasty looking opponent whose brother once fought Julio Cesar Chavez. Jakubowski said to us yesterday, well, I saw the mistake Gamash made. He stood in front of Arturo. I'm not going to do that. We shall see. Jakubowski reminds me of an old story about a boxing manager, Johnny Gray. He would load up guys and take them to Ohio and they would only say, bring them back alive, Johnny Gray. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you win or if you lose. Just come back alive. Bring them back alive. Jakubowski wants to go back alive to Whiting, Indiana. And Gotti starts off conservatively as Jakubowski, true to his word, is moving side to side. Now he takes a left hand to the body and is willing for a moment to stand and throw at Gotti. Jakubowski gets in two left hooks. 
Crowd likes it. I think that could be a, the worst mistake he can make tonight, trying to hit this guy. He loves it. Well, that's a mistake Kamash made. Box him and stay out of that fight. Two good body shots by Gotti. Two right hands upstairs by Jakubowski. And a left hook by Jakubowski, giving a much better account of himself than I certainly would have expected. And I think others at ringside are equally as surprised. And, and already there appears to be a little bit of a welt under the right eye of Gaddy. Well, as you know, in the old days when we had Gaddy fighting against quality fighters like Manfredi and Ivan Robinson, we used to say he started swelling coming out of the dressing room. And then bleeding on the way. That's right. <laughs> bleeding during the introduction. Boy, he's going down to the body. Yeah, and now Fishing he's going to set up, set up upstairs shots with those body shots. Not worrying too much about whether Jakubowski lands. You've got to be a world-class fighter to exchange fighters, fight punches with a man like Gotti. You just can't be a guy who hasn't fought in years. 384 days out of the ring for Eric Jakubowski before coming in against Arturo. Jack should just run and jab, run, jab, run, jab. Arturo with two more good shots to the body. Now Jakubowski starting to bunch his elbows at rings or at the rip side, and that's going to lead to the upstairs shots. Oh, those body punches have been so damaging now. Right hand lands. Jakubowski momentarily drops his hand. Gotti steps in. And Eric shows he's got a little bit of professional skill before Gotti deposits him on the seat of his pants with the left hook. Oh, six. It was those seven. body punches. Some in the crowd and at ringside were urging Jakubowski to stay down, but he wants to come out for the second round, and he will. You all right? You all right? You got to okay. stay with the box. Relax. Relax. Breathe. Breathe and relax now, okay? You're making them miss them big shots. That's what you want. Stay with the box for a minute, okay? You can move your foot a little bit. Bounce a little bit, okay? Bounce a little bit. For the ring, you, you walk in too much in position. You know what I'm saying? Move your foot, okay? You're going to go in this run. Don't try so hard, okay? Close your eyes. What we have here is Arturo, uh, Arturo, what we have here is Arturo Gaddy beating up on a college kid who wants to be a social worker. That left hook he has, world class. It is, isn't it? It doesn't matter who it is, they were hurt. And if I'm not mistaken, this may be the first full welterweight that Gaddy has fought. Jacko is jabbing and moving like his corner told him this time. Good, keep moving. Don't do that, just keep moving. when your legs are doing the talking. All right, Arturo, that's enough. Go back to the big leagues. Right? Yeah, I remember being knocked down like that, and you see your legs trembling, and you say, don't do that in front of this crowd. And your legs say, embarrassing. yeah, and you can't this is embarrassing. And you said, don't, and they do. He probably thought at the moment he got up that he was going to be okay, yeah, right? Yeah, he but the legs, they have a voice of their own. I did catch him in the first round. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> he caught you right on the bottom. I mean, I caught him. Oh, yeah, Eric Jakubowski yeah, talking about exactly what we talked about. He caught Arturo with two left hooks in the first yeah. round. Oh. oh, they'll go back home and say, oh, yeah. I did get him once, didn't I? Yep. Absolutely, yeah. I Give me another drink. Find <laughs> me another. I got him with I two. I put some swelling under his eye. Yeah. Now, here's the end of the fight. Uppercut. Right cross. Yeah. See, I almost kicked him. Boom, shakalaka. 
So Arturo Gatti has a third consecutive win in a third consecutive egregious mismatch. And for the moment, the New York State Athletic Commission and uh, the promoters who put this card together appear to have escaped any dangerous situation. There is no gurney at ringside. Jack Kabowski is not yet headed to a hospital. And a big sigh of relief is being breathed around the arena. They dodged one right there. Let's go into the ring for the official particulars on the KO with Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Wayne Kelly calls a halt to this bout. The official time, 40 seconds of round number two. Your winner by TKO victory. He's bringing thunder to the welterweight division. Arturo Thunder Gotti. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Anybody. That must Robert. be a body. Uh, final punch stat numbers. And this is tantamount to looking at the statistics in the Georgia Tech Cumberland game that uh, Tech won 222 to nothing. Total punches, Gatti lands 44 to 19 for Jakubowski and 84 to 51 thrown. That's in, oh, four minutes of action. Power punches. When a fighter lands 39 of 62 power punches, you have looked at a wipeout. And let's see what Arturo has to say for himself as he looks down the road toward bigger and more competitive things. Larry. All right, thank you. Arturo, congratulations. Now, that's the first time you've ever fought a, fought a welterweight. You feel any difference? Well, it's a real welterweight. This is the first time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, a punch of bar is harder. And uh, I was uh, was kind of slow tonight. You know, I was very, I was hard on my legs because I was slow. And, uh, you know, my upper body wants to throw my legs didn't follow too good. But, you know, we'll see on the next one how I feel at 47. And uh, if I don't, I like it at 47. But well, why is that? Is that is 147 not a good weight for you then? No, I, it's great. The 147 is good for me. I feel comfortable on it. But it was the first really, the first time tonight that I, I trained as a welterweight and to fight as a welterweight 147. It was kind of hard on me, but I like to fight the 147, definitely. Are you through with these type of fights? Do you want to go back up to the big leagues now? Well, I, th I think I should, you know. Uh, and I came back. I needed these fights for, my, you know, for myself because I had some tough fights. And, you know, my manager, he's the one that uh, gets my fights. And, you know, I fight whoever my manager brings. And I think it's time for us to step up. And you want to... Fight to make a position. And you want to fight Oscar De La Hoya if he wins next month? Oh, uh, definitely. In September, if it's all, hopefully it's possible, I'd love to fight uh, Oscar De La Hoya at the end of the year. You think you have a big enough punch against a big, good, or maybe outstanding welterweight? I think he's a great a great fighter. He's the best in the world. But, uh, hey, I'm 147 pounds. I want to fight the best. So Oscar is the best. So I should, I should have an opportunity to fight him also. Thank you very Thanks, much. Larry. Jim. Thanks, guys.